Hello, my beautiful people on YouTube and Facebook. Happy New Year. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. I already have my ladies and gentlemen here from Instagram. I see some guys connecting. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Happy New Year to all of you. And I'm excited about today's topic because we're going to be learning how to be a bold and courageous woman. For those of you who are new to this uh, life, we are learning the book, The Virtuous Woman of Today. We're starting this book. We're learning how to become those virtuous women that God is calling us to do so and to become. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you so much once again for connecting with me today. The topic for today is how to be a bold and courageous woman. And I have my people on Facebook, on YouTube, and Instagram connecting. So welcome to every single one of you. And uh, make sure you give it a like to this video. Make sure you share it. Make sure you give me a lot of hearts to know that you guys are connected. And I'm really, really excited to be here with you guys, starting the new year with you guys, learning how to become those virtuous woman of today amen and uh, before we get us started make sure you turn on the notifications because we have a lot of new things coming up for um, this new year and I don't want you guys to miss out on them so make sure you turn on notifications on Instagram on YouTube so and on Facebook so every time we post any of these things you guys get it notified with them and I have two quick announcements to give you before we get started guys first of all we have two new activities that are gonna start this year on the ministry and I'm very excited about their for about them first of all this saturday starting the saturday and every single saturday we're going to have uh, my sister jessica going deeper in the word of god we're going to have devotionals with her this will be at 9 30 a.m eastern time and once again will be every saturday starting this saturday this will be on our private facebook group transform your life so if you're not part of this group make sure you go you go connect and um, we're going to be live starting this saturday and we also have something exciting coming this monday for next week we're going to have a podcast and this podcast is called good morning lord it will be every single monday at 6 a.m you will have a five minute podcast devotional where you can go deeper in the word of God it will help you start the week right and it will be once once again a five minute message that you can meditate on to help you out throughout the week and from Tuesday to Friday we have one minute podcast is a, it's a short podcast that you can listen to the word of God get motivated get excited about the day and this are this podcast is called wisdom seeds so I'm excited about those guys make sure once again you turn on notifications so you guys get all this free content to you to help you continue transforming your life with God's word amen now if you're connecting make sure you leave me an amen a praise God a good morning a happy new year some sort of message so I know you guys are connected amen in the meantime let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you so much for this opportunity you gave us to be here in your presence thank you lord for the word you're going to be ministering to our hearts today we ask you to please help us be bold and courageous this year to be able to achieve all the goals and dreams and desires you have placed in our hearts to give us the strategies and the steps that we need to take in order to become everything you're calling us to become and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I'll see you Dulce Brito. God bless you. I see you here on Instagram. I see you guys connected on YouTube and Facebook too. Very excited to have you all here and let's get started so once again we're starting the book the virtuous woman of today and we have been learning all these puzzle pieces in the past few weeks if you guys missed any of the classes feel free to go 
and watch them. They are all safe on YouTube. So if you type in Diana Bryan Ministries, if you're watching uh, through Instagram, they are all on Facebook uh, and in YouTube recorded and safe. And you guys on YouTube and Facebook, you know where to find it. So the pieces that we have been learning so far, we have learned how to be a good a woman of good habits how to be a woman that is motivated all the time, how to be a woman who can do it all. And today we're going to be learning how to be a bold and courageous woman. So really excited about this topic. Once again, especially to start the year with this uh, mentality that we can do it all, that we can achieve all the dreams and desires that God has placed for us this year. Amen. I see you, Bella. I see you, Maricela. Thank you for connecting. I'm so happy once again about today's topic. Before we get started, guys, I always tell you, bring your Bibles. It's important that we read the Word of God. It's important that we just don't hear it, but we also read it, right? So if you have your Bibles with you, I want you guys to go to Joshua 1 9 and let's see what the word says in Joshua 1 9 that's going to be like very critical uh, for us to understand what God says about being a courageous and bold woman amen so let's read it it says have I not commanded you and this is God is speaking to Joshua it says have I not commanded you be a strong and courageous do not be afraid don't be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. How many of you said amen with me this morning? God is telling us that we need to be strong and courageous in 2022. Why? Because he's with us wherever we go. So if we treasure that promise in our heart, if we believe it, then we will be able to achieve everything God is calling us to do this year. We just need to know and understand that he's with us, that he's helping us, that he's guiding us. And today I'm going to give you strategies to learn what is fear, how we can manage fear, how we can get rid of fear, how we can be courageous, bold to do the things that God is calling us to do. But the first step is to understand that God is always with us, helping us with everything he's calling us to do. Amen. Now, fear is a powerful tool that, tool that the enemy uses to distract us and steal the dreams and desires the Lord has for us. So you have to start thinking that way, that if you're feeling fear, it's because the enemy is trying to distract you from what God is calling you to do. If you allow it, fear can paralyze you and can let you um can lead you to drop everything that God is calling you to do. And, and the way it does it is, once again, it paralyzes you. You don't feel like you have what you need to achieve what God is calling you to do. It can get you immobilized in such a way that it could affect not only your future, but the future of those who are surrounding you. Because remember, when God calls you to do something, it's not just to bless you, but to bless those people that are around you. It could be your children, your husband, your family, your parents, whoever it is. When God wants to bless you, he wants to bless everybody else who is around you. So when you are paralyzed by fear, you're not able to achieve the things that God wants to give you, but also the things that God wants to give the other people as well. Now, to overcome in our fears, it is not a complicated, as complicated as it seems. We sometimes think that to stop fear or to be bold, it requires this, you know, super powerful, um, you know, thing that we will need to do in order to achieve it. And it really is very simple. It's very easy how to do it. And I'm going to teach you today how to do it. But first of all, I'm going to tell you that it is important that we understand there are certain things you need to do in order to defeat fear in your life. First of all, you need to understand what fear is. And we're going to learn today what is fear. But you need to understand what it is. You need to identify the different kinds of fears that there is because there are different kinds of them. And there is a solution for each of them. We're going to learn that today. And we also need to understand that the more we expose ourselves to that fear, that kind of um, fear in our life, we are going to be able to get 
better at it and and build a muscle of how to defeat defeat the fear and how to be bold and how to be courageous that's why in this chapter you will learn to avoid and eliminate fear in your life amen how many of you said amen this morning are excited about it i want to read you in the comments uh, but in the meantime i'm going to teach you what means to be bold we want to we're saying we want to be bold and courageous but it's important or, or brave right it's important to understand what that means what does it mean to be bold being bold is to be able to identify those fears quickly and find solutions for each of them that's what being bold means and not allowing to paralyze you so the moment you are able to identify the fear you are being bold and if you're taking action and what does being courageous or being brave means is learning to take action no matter how you feel so the moment you actually identify what the fear is and you still are able to take action regardless on how you're feeling you are a courageous woman my my love and let me tell you all of us have that power in us and the reason why i'm writing this and i'm telling you this and you can see it in the book is because i experienced it myself i have different opportunities different ways to be able to defeat identify fear defeat fear and until i learn i build a muscle on how to do it and not allow the enemy to distract me or to stop me from the things that god is calling me to do so and on those all these opportunities that I have, and very briefly, I'm going to give you a couple of testimonies, but you can find the biggest and more powerful testimony in the book, um, The Virtuous Woman, where in this chapter, in chapter four, where I tell you how I definitely learned how to defeat fear, because I saw literally, I, I, I was able to see tangibly God's presence in my life. So go and read it there. Uh, but in the meantime, I have been able to defeat fear when God called me into ministry to be able to um, be courageous and stand in front of groups and, and, and hundreds of women and speak with them even though I'm a shy person, even though I'm an introvert, being able to do that, being able to be live here with you guys and put YouTube videos out even though I didn't feel comfortable, I felt like I was going out of my comfort zone, moving to another country, learning another language, having to figure it out, a new life and a new place and all these kind of things require us and require me to be courageous to be uh, bold to be able to achieve it to defeat fear so I can get to the place that God wanted me to be and if I was able to do it you are able to do it as well my love we were created by the same Lord and he has given us a spirit that give us all the strength and all the power to achieve everything he's calling us to do amen so what is fear let's start by Thinking about what is fear, the definition of the word fear, and this I took it literally word by word from the dictionary. This is what it says, but I, I want to share with you so we understand, guys, what fear is, and we realize that it's not a big deal. Fear, we make it a big deal because it's in our mind, and because in our mind is a big thing, but in reality is nothing. Look what the definition of fear says. On, in the dictionary it says a distressing body sensation so what is fear is just a sensation is a body sensation that makes you alert so the moment you feel fear is just a distressing body sensation that makes you alert as you think something imaginary is about to pass so look what all this is saying it's just a distressing body sensation that your mind is making you alert because you think something imaginary is going to happen. Something that it hasn't even happened yet, you think is going to happen. Happen. So according to this definition, fear is caused by our imagination. How powerful is this? If you notice, instead of making fear such a big thing in our life, we are reducing it to just being a feeling, just being a thought being something that you can control. Everything that is in here, you have the power because God has given you the power to control what is in your mind. 
what is in your in your head at the moment and that sensation that feeling is something that you can control as well that's why i'm telling you guys that we can be bold and courageous and go after everything god is calling us to do this year no matter what it is whether it is finding a new job whether it is being the best mother that you can be whether it is writing a book whether it is starting a new business moving to a new country learning a new language whatever it is that god is calling you to do starting a ministry whatever it is that god is asking you to do you have everything to do it and fear that fear that you feel is simply in a state of mind. It's just something, a thought, a feeling that you have and that you can control. Now, this feeling is a warning to the body to prevent you from feeling pain, causing you even more pain. Amen? So the more you think about fear, the more you let it grow in you, the more you're going to be blocking yourself from the blessing God wants to give you and is going to cause you even more pain. And I have the medicine, guys, the, the solution for fear. Amen. God revealed it to me through a scripture that we're going to read it later on. But fear has its medicine and the medicine for fear is faith. The medicine for fear is faith. Let's go type it in, in your notes, put in here where I can see you guys writing it because the more you say it, the more you write it, the more you declare it, the more you memorize it. And the medicine for fear is faith. The more you declare the word of God over your life, over the fear, the quickly it will disappear from your life. Amen. So just remember, every time you have fear, every time you're doubting something that God is calling you to do, that the medicine for that is faith. Now, when faith, or when we have faith and activate it in our life, we receive supernatural strength from the Lord to defeat anything that comes our way. So the moment we have faith in our life, the moment we start declaring God's word in our life, in that precise moment, we're going to have supernatural strength to get anything done. Remember I told you that being courageous means that you take action no matter how you're feeling. If you're feeling afraid, you still take action. That supernatural strength comes from faith. That it doesn't matter how you're thinking. It doesn't matter how you're feeling. You are believing that God called you to do what you're doing. And at the end, because God is good and his plans are good for you, you're going to see an amazing result and that's what it's all about it's it's about believing what the word of god says it's about applying it it's about replacing that thought that the enemy has planted in our head making us believe that you know we cannot do it or something bad is going to happen so we have to always remember that the medicine for fear is faith amen now, I want you guys to read, and let's read it together, Romans 8, 15. And this is going to remind us, guys, the importance of understanding God's word and treasure it in our life. Amen? So Romans 8, 15. Let's read it. It says, The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry Ava, Ava father amen so what is the word of god telling us here that the spirit we receive from god the moment we accepted jesus as our lord and savior the holy spirit that lives in us has adopted us as kids and daughters of the king of kings and lord of lords amen and this will eliminate fear in our life. Why? Because his presence, his love, his power is with us always. So that's what this is exactly telling us. So we have to adopt the spirit of courage. We have to be courageous wherever we go, understanding that the Holy Spirit is with us and he's the one who guides us. Now I want to go over guys what it means to be out of our comfort zone for those of you who don't know where the comfort zone is um imagine drawing a circle and you're standing right in the middle of that circle and everything that is inside the circle belongs as part of your comfort zone 
It's, and I'm going to give you some examples. Things that are inside that circle of your comfort zone is the type of work that you do every day, is the friends that you talk to every day, is the your daily routines, is the food that you eat every day, the country where you live, the language that you speak. Um, all those kind of things are the ones that are part of your comfort zone. And I'm going to tell you something, guys. A long time ago, the Lord revealed to me that you will be able to experience his power and his majesty when you are out of the comfort zone. That's when you're able to see God moving in a supernatural way in your life. And I'm going to tell you why, because when we are inside of the comfort zone, we have control over everything that is happening. We feel confident, we feel comfortable because we is is everything is known to us, right? So we have control over that. And if we have control over things, that means that we're not allowing God to have control over those kind of things. So when we are out of the comfort zone, we are at God's mercy. We're asking him to show us, to guide us, to move us. And that's why he encourages us always to be out of the comfort zone so we can continue growing expanding our mind expands our abilities our everything that god has given you starts growing when you're out of the comfort zone and that's why when we are courageous women and i'm, I'm going to explain to you for example when god asked me to write this book for the first time it was the first book i ever i have ever written and it was very in uncomfortable for me to be out of that comfort zone, exposing myself, putting all these thoughts out there. But I did it and God showed through. He, he helped me through the process. And that's exactly what he wants to remind you today that for this year, he wants you to get out of your comfort zone, to be bold, to be courageous, so he can take you to bigger and higher places in every single area of your life. Amen. How many of you say amen with me tonight? And let me tell you, I told you there are different kinds of fears, and I'm going to go over three different kinds of fears. The art and the solution for each of them. So the first fear when you get out of your comfort zone that you're going to experience is fear to lose something you love. That's the first fear that it comes. Sometimes when God asks us to move or do something different, we may be afraid to lose money, to lose friends, to lose reputation, or to lose control, right? Like we're gonna, we said God is calling me to do this, but I'm gonna lose control over this situation. And this kind of things can paralyze us and not make us feel comfortable to leave the comfort zone. So what is the solution for this? We need to, instead of thinking of the things we're going to lose, start thinking about the things we're going to gain. Amen. We need to start thinking instead of losing friends or money or what am I going to gain by getting out of the comfort zone? Because God promises in his word that his plans are bigger and better than ours and that all his plans are good for us. So obviously, if he's asking me to get out of my comfort zone, that means he has something better in a store for me. And that's why it's important that we understand that. And instead of focusing, what am I going to lose? Start thinking, what am I going to to gain. Amen. Now, fear number two is the fear to the process we have to go through. It's having that fear that we have to go through this process and uh, it's going to take time, it's going to take effort. And instead of thinking of that process, think about the final result. Instead of thinking, that you have to work hard at something because we will have to work hard. When you think about the final result, you're going to feel encouraged and motivated to do it. You're not going to start thinking, oh, this is going to take me a long time to get there. You're going to start thinking instead, I can't wait to get there because look at the result I am going to obtain. So at that point, all those thoughts of uh, having to work hard or the steps that you need to take or the fear of failure, right? will vanish because you're actually thinking about the amazing things that God is going to do for you once you achieve whatever he's calling you to do. Now, the third fear is the fear of to not see a change, right? We're working hard and I may not see a change, but I'm here to tell you to more, to this morning, um, whatever you're watching, 
that God, if he's asking you, my love, to get out of your comfort zone, if he's asking you to drop whatever he's asking you to do, do it and trust them because what he has for you is way much better than whatever it is that you're holding in your hands right now. So get out of your comfort zone, seek God, believe on what he's saying, believe on what you're expecting from him and he will come through. He, you will be able to see it. Some of the questions that we are uh, ask ourselves when we are afraid and, and we have the fear to not see a change is what if, at the end, we don't see the expected results. Or the other question is, what is after all my effort, there is no change on X or Y person? Or what if I fail? But all those what ifs are replaced with the word of God, are going to be replaced with you declaring that you're going to see that change, that if God called you to do it, it's because he is going to deliver and reminding yourself that that is just your fear of speaking, that that is just the enemy trying to help you quit because you want to quit and the enemy wants to help you quit. So all those thoughts, that's what it is. So what you have to do is, quiet that and the solution for this is to think about the benefits these decisions are going to bring to your life so once you make that decision whether it is to lose weight write a book become the virtuous woman right we're starting the book so become a virtuous woman whatever it is that you're deciding to do that you believe in your heart that god is going to bring those solutions at the end and you're gonna see it pass amen so in a few words, my loves, God moves in our lives when we are out of our comfort zone. And that's what we have to remember. That's where God is moving, out of our comfort zone. And that's where he wants us to be so we can grow and expand this 2022. Amen. Now, I told you if you guys wanted to... Um, become that bold and courageous woman that I'm going to give you steps. And th today we're going to study two of those steps. Next week we're going to stop, we're going to study three more steps that are going to help you uh, become that woman that can do it all and, and is bold and courageous in 2022. Amen. But before we do that, I want to read Psalm 91 from 11 to 12. So go look it up in your Bible, Psalm 91, 11 to 12. Let's see what the word wants to, the Lord wants to tell us this morning. Amen. So he says, for he will command his angels and pay close attention to this promise that God has for you this year. It is beautiful. It is powerful. And it really helps me personally in those moments that I'm afraid to do something. So Psalm 91, 11, 12 says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. How beautiful and powerful this scripture is, guys. Look what the Lord is telling us here. Whatever he's calling us to do, he will command his angels to come, carry us, help us, protect our steps so we don't trip and lift us up, lift us up when we feel tired, discouraged, we feel fear. So that's why it is important to remember, guys, that whatever God is calling us to do, you can call it and give it any title you want. We're not alone. He himself sent his angels to help us through the process. Amen. But you are able to experience this when you're out of the comfort zone, when you're being obedient and you're able to be out there exposing yourself so God can help you. That's why we need to be bold and courageous. Amen. Now, step number one to become a bold and courageous woman is to trust in God and his promises. That's the first step. And you're going to hear me throughout these teachings um, a lot giving you this step because it is important to trust, know God's promises and trust in those promises for your life. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, guys. Just meditate on these questions. You don't have to answer, uh, answer in your notebooks, but you don't have to answer here so everybody can see your answers. Um, but just meditate on this questions that I'm going to tell you. Do you know what God says about your future? Are you aware 
of what God is telling you, what he wants for you for 2022? Do you know his promises for your life? Do you know what God is telling you constantly about you, about who you are, about what he has given you and is asking you to do? Do you know that? If you don't know it, guys, it is important to know that it's your responsibility to know these answers to these questions. It is your responsibility to look it up. And these answers, you're able to find it in God's word. That's what you're able to see what God says about you, about 2022, about the plans that he has for you. So make sure you look them up. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and not on your own understanding. What does this word is telling us? The, God, the Lord is telling us here, trust me, don't trust your own thinking. Because in your own thinking, there is fear mixed in and it will not direct your path in the right way. That's why we need to seek God. We need to trust God. We need to say what he says about this situation, what he says about me, and trust and believe on what he's telling us. Amen? Now, search the word of God and trust in his promises. That's how I close that piece of that step in the book. Now, step number two is do not allow fear to take root in your life. It is important, guys, that we stop and cut fear in our life as soon as possible. The moment we start experiencing those thoughts that I mentioned to you before, or those uh, we experience that discouragement, we have to address it right away. Now, the best way to prevent fear from taking root is and, and for taking root in your life is to stop thinking too much. That's how it starts. I told you from the beginning, it's like a, it's a seed and it really grows. The moment you start meditating and thinking, yes, I'm right, I'm afraid, I cannot do this, I cannot be the right mother, I cannot write this book, I cannot, if you start believing it, it's gonna paralyze you and you're gonna end up quitting. So the first thing we need to do to stop that root from growing in us is to stop thinking too much. Amen? Now, don't think or meditate on what the enemy is putting in your mind. You need to fight. And how do you fight? With the Word of God. Instead of meditating on fear and those thoughts, you, ha you have to start meditating on God's promises. Amen? So the moment you start thinking about God's promises in your life, that's going to get bigger and louder in your mind rather than fear. Now, I want to read a part of the book, guys, um, that I want to say word by word how it says. And this is what I learned. It's in here, and this is scripture that I'm going to read to you what I learned, that the medicine for fear is faith. Pay attention to this. Um, once again, this is in the book, In the Virtuous Woman of Today. It says, um, Jesus left us a powerful teaching in Mark 440. So write it down, read it later on, that is scripture, Mark 440, considering fear. It says, Jesus and his disciples were in the boat and there came and there came a terrible storm that almost overthrown the canoe. But Jesus was sleeping. Desperately and very frightened, the disciples awoke Jesus asking for help. Jesus replied, why are you so afraid? And look at the question that Jesus asked right after that. Right after that, he says, do you still have no faith? And with his peace that characterized him, he calmed the waters. So a couple of things we can learn from this, guys. First of all, God, Jesus very clearly said it here. Why are you, af why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? So what is the medicine for fear? Faith. And then he says, and with he, oh, and then the word says, and with his peace that characterized him, he calmed the waters. How are you going to be able to calm the fears in your life, the thoughts in your head? With peace. Stop thinking. Stop thinking. And the moment you want to start thinking, think about the word of God. So replace it. Now I close in this chapter saying, do not let the storm of life steal your peace. Meditate on your faith 
and not on your fears. So going forward, guys, to be those bold and courageous women that God is calling us to be, we need to start meditating in our faith and not on our feels on our fears amen how many of you said amen with me this morning and once again guys remember those two things that i told you at the beginning i want to give this announcement again because i don't want you guys to miss out on them we're gonna start a devotional with my sister my sister is gonna be leading it every saturday in our private group transform your life if you're not part of it go and join the group transform your life every saturday at 9 30 a.m we're going to be going live and she's going to be going deeper in the word of god with devotionals and starting monday we have a new podcast coming out it's called good morning lord every monday you're going to get a podcast it's a five minute podcast it's very short because the intention is that you're able to meditate on the word of god and carry on with that seed for the rest of the week and from tuesday to friday in the same podcast there is something that is going to be called wisdom seeds and it's a one minute podcast just one minute that will give you the seed that you need for the rest of the day to build you up to encourage you to motivate you to start replacing those bad seeds that the enemy has been placing in our minds and start replacing it with god's promises what he says about us and continue helping us throughout the week amen how many of you are excited about that type in amen if you are and i'm really excited about it remember tomorrow guys you guys can activate the steps that we learned today with angelica make sure you join the workshop it's a live workshop where you get to meet with other ladies and, and mingle with them and continue growing so make sure if you guys want the link to that workshop you send me a dm and i will be more than happy to send you the link so you can join and activate these steps for this year and next week we're gonna have the class at the same time at noon going forward it will be every wednesday at noon i'll be here with you guys uh new york time and um that's it that being it let's close in prayer remember to give her a like and to share this video with other people to invite other ladies to be part of these classes so they can also be blessed with what with what god is doing through this ministry amen so let's close in prayer guys Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the word you have given us today. Thank you, Father, for activating in us the seed of encouragement, the seed of being bold and courageous. Father, we ask you to please help us remember that you're with us, that you have sent your angels to help us in everything that you're calling us to do in 2022. We ask you to help us be courageous, to be bold, to be women who can become everything you have called us to be, Father, that we can become that virtuous woman that you have declared we are thank you father for this beautiful day i ask you you bless all the ladies that are listening to this message and that we're here live today and the ones that are listening to this transmission later on father thank you so much lord we love you god and we pray in the name of jesus amen and amen thank you so much to con for connecting i see bella god bless you sweetie i see love face on youtube and I see Maricela, Natalia, Mercedes. God bless you. Thank you for connecting here on Instagram as well. Thank you for everybody who is connecting. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. I love you. And Happy New Year again, guys.